Here's a viewpoint. And, uh, what best to do during the COVID-19 period and also what's next and what will happen uh, in terms of the market at, at, at her point of view, right? And uh, we're trying to gather most uh, different kind of view from different sources, from different people. And I do hope that will benefit everybody. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, may I have uh, Datin Yap uh, to introduce a bit on yourself and uh, go ahead with your presentation. And uh, for your information, Dato Michael Kang will be late uh, about 15 minutes. That way he will definitely join us. Yeah. He's on the road. And uh, once he's there after the presentation of, uh, from uh, Datin, Datin Yap, then uh, we'll follow on with the Q&A and answer all your, your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Latin, can you go ahead? Um, can you all see the slides? I've uh, shared it. Um, can you all see the slides? Yes. Can. Yes. Uh, okay, fantastic. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Um, so I think uh, yesterday was a little bit, the day before, was a bit of a good news for everyone. Uh, okay, of course. Um, maybe some will say not to uh, our expectations yet, but then I think... Um, uh, because of many associations working really hard to make this work, um, definitely we do see a lot more people being able to claim the wage subsidy program. So uh, I'm going to organize it this way. I'm going to share with you all some slides um, and then uh, ask questions along the way. Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, now there is a new definition. So being a micro, medium, as well as, uh, um, uh, hang on, uh, let me try and share this. Okay. So, um, how the definition is um, there is uh, three categories, meaning is uh, micro, medium, and large. And so, um, for those who are in micro, I think uh, it's good news in the sense that financial assistance is until 1002 per month, uh, and then for medium is 800, and for large is 600. So, um, from there, a lot of people have started calling me already. Okay, I cannot move to the next slide. Okay, so uh, they started calling me um, that now there is no, um, for micro, that means 75 staff and below, uh, there is no requirement that you have to prove that the sales has gone down by more than 50%. So that is good news for a lot of people. And uh, so in fact, some, uh, a lot of people have uh, started to prepare and apply uh, by the nine already. And then, um, but the, the unfortunate part is for medium and large, there is still the 50% reduction uh, in sales requirement. And, and for that, a lot of people has also asked us, so let's say January's uh, sales is, uh, let's say, 1 million, okay? Then if February is, uh, let's say, uh, 600,000, it didn't go more than 50%, then we need to look at March. So if March has gone down to, let's say, 400,000, and in comparison to January, it, it, you qualify for that. Okay, so, uh, and it also says here for the following months as well, meaning uh, if in the if March you haven't hit the 50% threshold yet, but in April and May, uh, your sales have gone down. So you can also look at that and you can compare not only to January, you can compare with the other months. So long you can show that within the months, there is a 50% reduction. So uh in a way it's good but then uh it does uh not not everyone hits the 50 percent immediately lah, okay and then um it's for staff salary four thousand and below so on this a lot of people has also asked us four thousand is it basic or what um actually it's not four thousand it includes all the commission all the ot as well as allowances so following the soxo definition of wages uh, yesterday Okay, so also came up with a uh, further definition, a uh, further clarification, and so you can refer to that in in yesterday's set of Q and A. Uh, you can see the the definition. Okay, um, and uh, so if you want to go for this uh, funding, I mean uh, this WSP, you have to retain this class, this set of employees for three months that you are under WSP and three months after. So questions so far that uh, we've gotten, the first one I've answered already. Uh, second, if let's say this company has uh, 400 workers, 
So uh, whether they are entitled to claim uh, the uh, this WSP for uh, all 400 or or not? Well, the answer is uh, is only limited to 200. So using 200, uh, you can claim uh, that that's the maximum you can go to okay. uh, And also, many people ask, okay, uh, if cannot uh, retrench uh, or terminate this staff uh, within these six months. Uh, what if the staff uh, is uh, resigned? Okay, that one is fine because if the staff is resigned, you just need to inform uh, Kesso. Uh, that's good enough. But the next question is, uh, what if this staff, uh, you ask the, this, this staff to take unpaid leave uh, or, or you ask them to for a wage cut? So we've clarified with uh, Kesso as well. So for the staff undergoing this program, that means you have submitted the names to Pakeso to uh, for this financial uh, wage assistance, wage subsidy, you cannot ask them to take uh, unpaid or pay reduction. Okay. Uh, then the next question business owners will be asking is what about those uh, that uh, do not fall under this uh, uh, WSP? And so uh, the Pakeso is silent on this. Uh, so in that sense, I believe uh, we for the staff that is above 4,000, uh, it is up to the uh, business owner's discretion to ask them to uh, whether you want to negotiate terms for uh, unpaid or pay reduction. Okay. So this is uh, what we believe in, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, so for next, uh, yeah, maybe for yeah, those who anything urgent, maybe can mute your your speakers so your that we don't. We can mute your for your speakers. Okay. Um, then next conditions to look at. Uh, okay. Uh, here. Okay. A lot of people ask us how to apply. Uh, you need to go to the Pakeso's website to uh, apply. And um, what's the difference between ERP and uh, this uh, wage subsidy program? Uh, for ERP, the payment is um, uh, is for the staff who is. 30 days not working. That means you have asked them to go on 30 days unpaid. And um, in fact, some business owners are opting for that because some of their staff, they say they cannot, um, uh, they during this MCO, they really cannot perform any work. They cannot work from home. So in this case, if you've asked your staff to go for unpaid, then the uh, program that is suitable for you is the ERP. So you can, uh, the payment will be made to employers and then you need to credit this to your employee to help them throughout this period. Okay. But if your staff is working and um, they are entitled, then I would uh, recommend everyone to quickly go and apply for this wage subsidy program because um, we've worked out for some business owners, the amount can be quite substantial, um, especially if you have um, Actually, in a way, now is good time to have uh, uh, diff many different companies. Uh. Uh, we've worked out some cases. The director has, let's say, seven companies. So uh, because each of the seven companies, the staff is below 75. So in that case, every company he can claim for the staff until 1002. So in that sense, um, in this scenario, having more companies is more beneficial for him. Uh. But on the other hand, uh, we also worked out for some business owners. Uh, they have only one company and then the company has uh, more than 200 employees. So for that case, uh, then he can only claim maximum 200 and also the subsidy is a lot less. It's up until 600 only. Okay, so you have to weigh in and work out the costing for your different scenario. Okay. Then next thing uh, is um, Next, we look at the where to where to claim. Uh, it is at the Prihatin Pakeso uh, website. You can start from the 9 onwards, and it says until 15 September, or subject to the funds allocated or any decision. So I would uh, I would I would uh, advise everyone to claim earlier lah, because um, I think the earlier the better. In case the funds are uh, not enough, then have to apply for more. I think that's um. Uh, not so good, so better to claim earlier. Yeah. Okay, and the payment will be credited within seven to fourteen days to the employer's account. Uh, okay. Now 
documents needed? Many people have uh, asked us what are the documents needed. First, you need the list of the employees. Of course, maximum is 200. And then you need your, your bank account because Pacaso will be uh, crediting to your bank account. Uh, you need the employer's uh, registration ID, your MyCoid, uh, copy of your SSM records, okay, your PSU 50, which is the declaration, and also financial uh, supporting documents. So you need to show your ledgers or your invoices, uh, I mean your ledgers, uh, uh, showing that you have to prove, especially if you are 75 and above, to prove that your sales has indeed uh, gone down. And uh, so you that's the proof of, doc of documents you need. Uh, I just want to show you, uh, some people ask us what is PSU 50, you can get it from the website, but it's actually a declaration that all the information you provided is, uh, is there. And uh, even in your supporting documents, the management needs to certify that it's a, a, a actual copy. Lah. Okay, so management certificate certification is good enough. Okay, and this is the list of the employee names. So uh, you need to list them all here and to email it to them uh, for those who are entitled to be claimed. Okay, so that means a uh, total all in salary less than four thousand. Uh, and um, for, okay, so this is uh, on the wage subsidy. Uh, at the end of uh, my presentation, if you have any more questions, you can ask. But uh, we did a comparison between Malaysia and Singapore scenario. Okay, um, because uh, the third stimulus package came out uh, two days ago uh, at four o'clock. Uh, at the same date, uh, Singapore's, um, Singapore's uh, third uh, stimulus package also came up. And so we took a comparison and um, uh, in Singapore, they also started their uh, MCO, they call it circuit, circuit breaker. Um, for Singapore, during this uh, one month period, the Singapore government is going to subsidize 75% of their wages for all employees, um, uh, I mean uh, Singaporean employees and uh, up to a limit of uh, 4,500. Uh, so, well, in comparison, definitely um, Singapore's uh, is uh, more lucrative. Lah, huh? uh, I know SME Association, Dato Michael Kang has been fighting really hard for SMEs in Malaysia. And so uh, we want to give him support. Lah. Um, actually, three months is not enough. Huh? Okay? Of course, we are thankful that we have three months wage subsidy. But uh, if uh, the government could look at a further extension, it would be fantastic. Uh, in Singapore, the wage subsidy is for nine months. Okay? The 75% subsidy is only for this one month during their circuit breaker, which is their MCO, their version of it. Uh, but for the balance, uh, they are going to the, the, the full wage subsidy for Singapore is for a total of nine months. Okay? It's 25% across for all. Um, industries, 50% for FMB and 75% for hotel uh, and tourist related industry. So it's something I think we could uh, look at. Okay? Um, so when we did a comparison, we use a FMB company uh, hiring, let's say 20 people. And each uh, in Malaysia, uh, under this scenario, 20 people, they will be entitled to a 1,200 wage subsidy. So for this uh, FMB company, they will be entitled to 24,000 um, per month. If times three is 72,000, definitely will help business owners a lot. Okay? But then again, compared to uh, our neighbor, okay, Singapore. So for Singapore, similarly, a FMB company with 20 employees, uh, for the, this month, they will get 30,000 based on the 75%. Um, assuming all, all of their staff is 2,000 pay. Lah, okay? And then for the balance eight months, they get another 50% wage subsidy. So 50 times um, 2,000 and times eight months, that comes up to 160,000. 160,000 for the eight, balance eight months, include now the 30,000 for this circuit breaker month, 
So in uh, Singapore, all in their wage subsidy is 190. So 190,000 versus 72,000. We don't convert, okay? But um, there is a gap. And so, uh, uh, Dr. Michael, later I tell we would need your help to work harder. I know every day you're going to Putrajaya already. Thank you so much uh, to all the association um, as well as SMEs who are speaking out now because uh, we've seen, we, we see, we foresee uh, this is going to be very um, harsh. Um, this is the first time uh, in any um, crisis whereby business own, businesses uh, cannot open business, okay, cannot. So therefore the impact uh, I've, we've seen is maybe not just now, you know, it's uh, three to six months down the road. So if this wage subsidy can be further extended, I think we will be very grateful for that. Okay, then for second thing to look at is the uh, exemption for the HRDF uh, fees. This one was in the stimulus tool. Uh, HRDF will be exempted for six months okay, and uh, effective from uh, April until September. So definitely this would this cash flow savings would help. Okay. The, this is the circular by HRDF. And the third is um, EPF. Actually, uh, uh, I know a lot of association has also asked for EPF to be totally uh, exempted for six months. Uh, I work with Dato uh, Michael on this as well. Um, but uh, so far, um, I think it's still unclear. La. It's, uh, it says there is possibility to defer, to restructure, and also to reschedule payments. But uh, uh, I, I looks like uh, we can only uh, discuss this on a case-by-case -case basis uh, uh, and from the 15 onwards. So um, for this, we hope uh, to get some good news because um, EPF, uh, if you add up, it's, it's, it's quite a significant amount, you know? So, Mm, if we, uh, I think we need, yeah, I know long-term EPF is important uh, for retirement and all, but if uh, employees can't get it through now, uh, it now also cannot survive, uh, employer, employee cannot survive, then we don't even need to look at long-term. So we do also uh, hope to see uh, a more concrete um, answer here. Uh, why not uh, exam? Uh, EPF for six months. Ah. Okay, this is my, my views. Okay. okay, the fourth thing to look at is on the income tax installments. So again, this is already in the second uh, stimulus package uh, that the uh, for SMEs, um, the uh, income tax can be deferred um, for a period of three months uh, starting from 1st April 2020. <laughs> My slides. How to go back? Hang on. Uh. I can't move to the next slide now. Okay. So uh, for this, uh, the extension for the Borangsa uh, Form E uh, is extended until 31st May. Uh, BE Form uh, which all Malaysians normally very last minute do also. Suppose we do uh, 30th April, now it's uh, 30th June. Uh, then uh, Borang B and Borang P, which is sole proprietor and partnership, is, uh, post, uh, is uh, the grace period is extended to 31st August. Um, and then also uh, for all the um, syndrome of hearts, um, it's, ex it's extended to nine months from the year end. So let's say your year end is 30th September, nine months is uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So it's until June uh, uh, if your year end is September. But currently the um, extension is only given from July year end to November year end. December year end, I, uh, we, we are still requesting for it like, because most uh, syndrome hearts most uh, companies, their yeah, year end normally falls on December. Just uh, a lot of business owners tell me easier to count. So that's why it's always peak period. So we would ask for uh, extension for December year end as well. Okay. 
So uh, for the three months uh, installment payment, it's um, how it works is um, you do not, in this case, the, the example shown by income tax is, let's say the estimated tax is 1.2 million. Then from April, May, June, you defer the payment downwards. Okay, um, That means for these three months, you do not need to pay. Uh, but ex, as um, tax uh, uh, agents, tax experts, what we advise is instead you should make use of the third month revision. Okay, so with um, what's happening now, uh, normally the tax estimation revision is only allowed six months, nine months. So now there's a special third month revision allowed, and therefore I would advise all business owners to file for that now. Okay. Assuming your year end is December, they've given another grace period, meaning until 30th April to be able to, um, to, 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 be able to file that uh, third month revision. Uh, so revise it down to the, le to the level you uh, believe is right for your company. So uh, we've uh, helped some of our clients. We've even um, revised it to the amount they paid so far. And let's say business back to, um, normal again or business recover again. I mean, we can always hope and pray, right? Um, when business recover in the six and nine months, you can revise it back again. So this will definitely help business owners cash flow. So um, we need to save from all angles at this point. In terms of tax, uh, my advice now is um, first to go and the third month revision, revise it down. Uh, you can revise it to the level you've uh, paid for the last few months, and then uh, wait and see. Uh, if business is really uh, bad, then you can keep it as it is. But if business uh, recovers, you still have the six and nine months to revise it back to uh, where it should be. Lah. Okay, so this is some, some tips for everyone. Uh, similarly, uh, RPGT return, the deadline has also uh, been extended. So if your due date for RPGT is from 18 uh, to 30th April, the deadline is uh, now uh, 30th April. Lah, okay? okay. Now, uh, landlords, um, the government in the third stimulus package, I think uh, for everyone, the fixed cost is uh, staff cost. Okay, uh, I know everyone is uh, negotiating already uh, with your employees. The, the government this time has also, um, uh, you know, in the first, uh, first two, three weeks, you know, uh, the Ministry of um, uh, Labor uh, was giving a lot of uh, human resource, the Ministry of Human Resource was uh, making a lot of statements that, you know, you cannot uh, ask your staff to go on unpaid, you cannot ask your staff to um, go for a pay cut. But uh, in this uh, recent, the latest announcement, the PM has said that you can go and negotiate uh, with your uh, staff. And I believe many business owners uh, has already commenced doing so, um, especially after looking at the financial uh, cash flow reserves that a lot of people have. Uh. And so, uh, but of course you need consent from your staff still. Uh, and um, if there's any uh, employees watching uh, here, really uh, want to speak up from the boss's point of view. Uh, uh, bosses are really going through really hard time now, especially SMEs. Um, you know, when business is as usual, um, we, a lot of business owners can still roll on, okay? But when, Business is not as usual, you know. This is really, really out of the ordinary, never happened before. So um, not that bosses don't want to pay, it's just that if bosses need to also make sure the company can survive. Uh, so um, that is, the, you can start negotiating with your employees now. And I believe, um, in fact, I believe, and I've seen many employees are actually very, Empathy, empathetic, very sympathetic as well. Um, we've seen some cases, even some employees offered to step up and uh, offered to take unpaid leave uh, because they, they know that eventually um, if company can survive, 
uh, then employees work also can survive. And in the uh, US, the filing for the uh, unemployment has gone to 10 million and above already. So I think uh, for bosses as well, it's time to have this wake up call, um, that this sort of discussions with your employees. Uh, now is the perfect time to really talk to everyone and really paint out the actual scenario that is happening. Okay. Uh, okay, back to number five, um, which is the uh, rental uh, tax deduction uh, for retail uh, as well as f and A lot are uh, not able to pay the uh, the landlords. Uh, in fact, uh, if you've seen news, H and M is has stopped paying to landlords uh, worldwide already. Yeah? And so uh, for landlords, uh, it's also of course uh, landlords can have the moratorium, meaning the term loan can be deferred. Lah, but I'm sure landlords also have a lot of other expenses. So the government has uh, in this uh, stimulus package uh, given a special tax deduction for landlords that give out rental discounts to all waiver to SMEs. Lah. So for example, if let's say your monthly rental is uh, 20,000, if you give a total waiver, this uh, 20,000 can be used as a tax deduction when you are computing your year-end tax. Uh, the, the mechanism, how it works, exactly we have to wait uh, for um, income tax, but in a way it's like a double deduction because first you don't receive that income. Okay? Then second, that amount, let's say that 20,000, you can use it to offset your taxes. So in that sense, um, it, it is um, a, a welcoming uh, encouragement for landlords, give them more reason to, to give the waiver. Uh, but to bear in mind, the waiver must be at least 30% uh, reduction and also the tenants uh, is con consisting of SMEs. Uh. Okay. Then for six, uh, got a little bit of discount for foreign worker levy fees. So say your foreign worker levy fees, uh, you will be given a 25% discount, but this excludes household mate. Okay? So mate, no discount, but all your other uh, factory or contractor uh, foreign worker, there is a discount on this. Now, uh, the, then so we've covered already the third uh, stimulus package. Uh, the rest is more from the second stimulus package, but I believe it's still very important for SMEs. And um, I, from speaking with many SMEs over the last three weeks, we find that many SMEs have not taken action yet in terms of financing. So as we know now, cash is king. So we want to make sure we have enough finances to be able to survive. Okay. So the first thing that the um, we all must look at is the moratorium, but of course this is automatic now. Um, I've even seen cases that uh, companies who paid uh, their loan facility, their BG, uh, bank, uh, their, their, their BA, okay, uh, bankers acceptance for let's say 200,000 to the bank and the bank actually give them back the money. So that that is good, okay. I think we need the cash flow to uh, be able to last longer, okay. And uh, so for this period of time, if you added for the moratorium, uh, there's no late payment charges will be imposed um, for this six months. Uh, uh, but having said that, uh, we have many banker friends who are also very worried. What happens six months down the road? Uh? Six months down the road, yeah, some people say a bit far, but then what happens when everyone's payment is due? So, um, this is something business owners must also uh, consider. Lah, oh. Then the next thing is um, uh, uh, interest will continue to be charged, but uh, whether it's compounded or not depends on the bank. And so some banks have already come up, and in fact, most uh, that to say that they are not going to compound interest uh, during these six months. And uh, that, that, that is good news for us. Uh. Um, uh, so this is also extended to uh, OD, to trade facilities. So like I said just now, the BA and all is also part of this moratorium. Uh, we have another case that we looked at um, that, uh, for, for this factory. 
uh, this business owner, he was very worried. Uh, okay? He couldn't sleep for many nights once the MCO started. Uh, uh, I think it's the same with many business owners out there. And so he asked us to calculate and consult them on this. Uh, when we did the calculation, one of the biggest cash outflow that he would need to deal with is his BA uh, was about 700,000. So at that time, the automatic moratorium was not clear yet. Uh, you can imagine now banks are also going through uh, major um, confusion because right? so many things and so today have to process so many things. So at that time, uh, he quickly go and talk to his bank. Um, and uh, even before the moratorium was uh, finalized and details given, uh, the bank already told him, don't worry. He didn't need to uh, pay the BA first. And so uh, that bought him a little, uh, some relief time, lah, means uh, breather space um, to be able to, uh, you know, really strategize what to do in this uh, six months. So uh, I, I must about to say uh, banks are really helpful uh, in these times. Uh, of course, uh, it's mandatory under Bank Nagara, but definitely this helps uh, in every way. Okay, uh, and uh, let's look at what are the financing facilities for SMEs. Um, uh, now the SME definition is uh, very important, uh, so everyone is searching. Of course, this SME definition uh, don't confuse with the uh, wage subsidy. The, under the wage subsidy is according to the number of staff. So this SME is more for the uh, the, the loan financing options available. Okay. So um, okay, the special relief facility. Okay, this is for SMEs. Um, it's until it's up to one million per company. Uh, it cannot be used for repair, renovation, refinancing. It can be used for day-to-day -day operation. Uh, for your paying your suppliers, payroll, marketing. So for this SRF funds, um, the uh, if you have not applied, quickly go and apply. The first round of funding uh, was two billion. Uh, the the amount has been in, increased to five billion. Uh, but from what is happening now. Uh, the uh, the approval is taking quite a long time. Okay, I'm not sure if you've got your SRF facilities fundings ready, but uh, um, this few weeks application has taken quite a longer time uh, to, to process. So if you uh, you have applied and you are waiting, it's um, quite normal. I think the banks have a lot of processing to do, uh, but please go and rush your banker. But for those uh, who have not applied, uh, uh, better stand by some funding. Uh, okay. um, and so for this financing, the uh, interest is 3.5%. There's no collateral. And maximum is 1 million per SME. Uh, the, is the tenure is 5.5 uh, years. Uh, it's with all banks. Uh, if let's say one bank give you 300,000, you can still go to another bank for 700,000. But most of the time, the banks have their own stringent requirements. Uh. So best to deal with the banks who you've, you have been dealing with, you've taken a loan with. Okay? And, uh, but the maximum is 1 million. So if you go to one bank, the bank gives you 1 million already. So um, that's the max you can get. Uh, and uh, if you have a, a business owner have different companies, okay, you can also each uh, company can go for the financing. Okay, uh, uh, so then for micro uh, financing, I think um, micro, um, the smaller business owners are happier la, with the with the stimulus package. Uh, um, well, why they say that is uh, because uh, there's a grant given the 3000 grant for these micro companies. Um, and also there is a 0% loan, of course the amount is not huge, it's about 70,000, but uh, it's under BSN. So if you are micro, uh, go and apply for this uh, immediately, um, it's 0%, I think it's worth it. Okay. Uh, then therefore there's, the micro SMEs are happy, therefore the 
um, the not so happy ones are the bigger ones. Uh. Um, I've worked for one case, uh, consulted one company. They are not in any of the SME category, but suffering a lot because uh, their business is tourism related. Okay, So um, they can't get any of the special relief uh, and also for the, the, they can't get any of the special relief funds. So they have to figure out another way. And also for the, uh, the wage subsidy, the maximum they can get is also 600. Lah. So now uh, if, if your company is growing and um, don't fall under the SME category, I think now also a headache for everyone. Lah. Okay, so back to micro. Uh, um, there's uh, this micro MEF uh, you can apply with banks. Okay. Uh, so banks is one. Then second is like what I said just now with uh, the BSN. Previously, the uh, interest is 2%, but now it's uh, 0%. Uh, then next, as a, uh, under CGC, there is a Bismula I, as well as a, a Biswanita I. Um, one week ago, we were also consulting a business owner. She's a female entrepreneur. So she didn't qualify for the, uh, the, the other loans because uh, she didn't have the three-year track record. There's no financial statements. The business started one year ago. Um, banks have all these, uh, you know, all these uh, requirements. Uh. So she went for the CGC uh, Biswanita I, and the requirements are much less. Uh, and she's they are still processing, but looks very likely she's able to get this funding. Uh, okay. As so, what is the requirements? at least 51% of the shareholding is owned by women. Okay, so um, if your business, uh, you have a, you're, you're a woman entrepreneur, you have 51% uh, shareholding, you can apply for this loan. Because the amount is uh, less, it's about 300,000, but it's also worth applying for. Okay, um, so these are the comparison of the banks. Uh, I, my presentation is uh, ending soon. Um, there's a few things that I want to just um, share my thoughts with everyone, with all the SME business owners out here before uh, my session is over. Um, I believe now um, there are three types of business. First, those already in ICU, meaning the cash flow um, won't be able to sustain for past one month or even two months. So these ICU um, businesses, uh, what you need to do is you need to take drastic action to really look at where to cut um, as well as uh, what you need to do. Um, we have some F&B cases. After we look at their case, uh, the own business owner made a decision that he needed to, you know, just um, close off some of the uh, the outlets that he has. Um, and I want to share with you also, in a way, this situation hits us twice. Uh, uh, because before that already, many SMEs, uh, financial discipline is maybe not there yet. You know, um, the, a lot of the um, collection is uh, not, you know, the, the, the aging have a lot, uh, a lot in the aging. Um, your customers not paying you on time, uh, or some business owners, uh, they have own a lot of stocks. So all the cash, even before the MCO, is stuck in the business. So in the first place, the company already not so healthy. So add up this whole situation where business cannot open. So put these companies right into ICU. Lah. Okay. So for example, just that day we saw one case um, the business owners ask us to work out the cash reserves they have uh, on hand. And so when we worked out, it's about one month plus. Okay? But when we look at the debtors, wow, the debtors is huge. Uh, they have um, debtors of 3 million plus. Uh, the, these debtors have not paid them. And um, the problem is, in such circumstances, will the debtors pay them? Ah? 
So of course we ask them to try uh, to 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 find ways to brainstorm ways to uh, you know give the customers a reason to pay them now, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Okay. But we've uh, found a few uh, of the customers that he's going to target on, and he's going to really talk to them. Okay. So. Uh, like I mentioned just now, first time business is under ICU, business owners must take drastic action. Um, no point being depressed about the whole situation. Uh, our associations, I mean, let's speak up and also ask government for help. But meantime, we also must help ourselves. What are the drastic actions that we need to do now? We need to make such decisions. These decisions um, must be fast. Okay. And sometimes it could be very, um, it, it may not be the most popular decision, but you need to make these decisions now. Okay. Then second, there are those who are uh, sick. Uh, like I said just now, uh, maybe the cash flow can last maybe three, four months. Okay. Uh, but uh, sick in the sense that um, caught a bit of the flu already. Okay. The third type is going to be sick. And the fourth is the healthy, which are the, Essential services ones, uh, I, I, I believe. Uh, so uh, now everyone's so envious, they can open shop. Uh, uh, but of course, they have uh, the essential services group of people have their own set of problems. Uh. And so um, having uh, presented all that, I think business owners are now on survival mode. We, doing business is not easy. Uh, I've been through uh, two recessions, 97 and 2008. I believe this one will be the worst. Um, a lot of people talk about U curve and all, because this is uh, global. I believe this one will be one of the worst. Um, I'm not saying that lose hope and that's the end of the world. But what I'm trying to say is, business owners, we need to put ourselves on survival mode now, because it will be survival of the fittest. There will be shops. There will be companies who will close down. In fact, we've already seen uh, some already have made the decision to close down because to them it's maybe not worth doing it anymore. So, uh, but for those business owners who, who, you know, you still want to continue, you need to put yourself in survival mode. Uh, you need to strategize uh, the strategize. You need to also work out a stress test. Worst case scenario, what you do best case scenario, what will happen? And uh, we should be planning from the worst case scenario. So stress test your, um, your PNL, your cash flow. And the worst case, uh, when you see the worst case, for sure, you will know what to do already. Okay. Then second step is align your team with a wake up call. If I believe there are many um, youngsters who have not been through uh, recession. Uh, now is the time to um, wake everyone up, you know, uh, that everyone needs to step up and also um, put in the extra effort to defend and also to move on to be able to survive. And third is look through collection, cost cutting and defending your revenue concurrently. It needs to be done together. So uh, and brainstorm with your team how to save costs, how to save, be more efficient. Chinese, we call it gao xiao. Be more efficient in doing your day-to-day -day, uh, and also uh, to, to, plan, uh, to plan ahead for the worst that is going to come. Or is whether, um, of course, everyone says that MCO most likely until end of the month, uh, I, I don't dare to declare it, but we have to wait on the 10, but there's many, many uh, talks that, you know, most likely will be then. And so therefore our financial stress test, we should test it. What if MCO is until end of the month? What if is until more than that? What if and what if? I think this is a reality check that we all need to make now. Okay. So uh, prepare for the worst and also hope for the best. Um, I'm not saying that there's no hope, but in order to survive, we really need to be very careful now, okay? 
So uh, that's all for my sharing today. And I pass back to the MC. Is Dr. Michael in already? Hi. Thank you, Tatin. Okay. Thank you very much. I like the work you say, stress test to everybody, and also very good uh, presentation, uh, a, a very inspiring one, where you have to work with your team. I believe so. And uh, like it or not, there are many uh, SME are going to close now. We know that. How much we can help them? Uh, we will try our best, of course, and then we do want to see that moment. Even now, why, why, why is the reason that you have to work with the team? Because the fact that if the team doesn't work well together and if the company go bust uh, for the staff, it's not easy to find a new job at this time. So I believe uh, every one of us are concerned. And uh, truly, thank you for your group presentation. And then for all of you, if you need a copy of the slide, uh, please go to our website and uh, register at the. Uh, a simple member, just put your email there and a very simple registration step, and we will email you the slide. Uh, thank you very much for your kind uh, support. And thank you, Datin, once again. I would like to inform you that uh, Dato Michael Kang is already here uh, with us. Uh, welcome, Dato. And uh, we uh, want welcome. to straight go ahead to the QA. Uh, uh, Jacob, can you start uh, the question? Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Okay, there is a nine question we gather from all, all of our audience from WebEx and also from Facebook. Okay. The first question will be the qualification is it only based on number of employees, right? Don't have to consider on company revenue. Is it? Okay. okay. Second question. Would this WSP applicable to part-time staff and foreign worker? Dato, you want to answer or not, Dato? Dato, you are mute. Can't hear you. Uh, okay, if, as long as your, your staff register with SOCSO, is the name with SOCSO, if you don't uh, register with SOCSO, sorry, you are not eligible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next question. If we give unpaid leave from 1st of April until 14th of April during the MCO time to our employees, the balance two weeks of April we resume severely pay to them. Can I still apply to the double Uh No. Uh, those below 4,000, 4, you're you not allowed to pay cut at. Uh, I'm not allowed to. Only whatever action you take, then you are not eligible to claim. Okay, understand. The next question: How to apply for BSN Micro SME Credit Facility? You contact BSN. BSN, there is a hotline, or you can call them anytime. They are, I think they are uh, how to apply. They have. Maybe later we can post out to our website. Okay. Okay. Next question. What, what is the fair percentage for salary cut if agree with the employees? I think different companies have different uh, formula. I think it doesn't know company, your company status and everything. For them, they are totally cannot pay uh, full amount. They can maybe only pay 30%, then negotiate with as a, yeah, if they are earning four four thousand and above, so the balance maybe you can pay later when company make profit, or some of them they're using you know convert into their company share. Or, or, there's so so many ways so you know, y'all can negotiate with stuff. I think a lot of solution outside there. I think you can consult your uh, advisor or, or your accountants. You know to go through the like what I think uh, Yang already say that we go through the the uh, straight test how how is your your Okay, understand. Okay, next question. How about for the parent company that run an office to their subsidy company? Will it also can be considered as tax discussion? Yes. Okay. Next question. For the SRF. Is it the fund mainly support the utilities used from a factory only? Uh, uh, 
factory news about the factory is only what they mean. Um, is it means for the SRF? Is it the uh, is only the fund mainly support the utilities used from a factory? Uh, working no, capital, lah. Hmm. Working capital for working capital, yes, not. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's put payroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Managers, working capital. Okay. Understand. Next question. Company owned by Malaysia PR, not by the Malaysia citizen, are they eligible to claim for the SIS? Uh, Malaysia is 51% owned by citizen. Okay. Next question. If my company is an MNC company, can you apply for this WSP or not? Cannot. Company. Uh, multinational company. I'm not sure whether multinational, but this is this this package is SME. Those who uh, above 200 staff. Okay. Uh, when we check with uh, Pokeso, they did say uh, if you fulfill the requirements, that means the number of staff you fulfill, you still can apply. Okay, understand. Okay, next question. Okay, this question, I think have many, uh, we received many questions about this. Um, if I have a come, uh, I have an employee which is 60 years old and above, is it applicable to this subsidy or not? As long as they're so, so contributor. Uh, Okay, next question. Contributor, no issue, right? Yeah, if you have name in the social list, I think there's no issue. Yeah. Okay, understand. Next question. For the iron 4K subsidy, uh, for the iron 4K salary cap, is it included their allowance and commissions? Yes. Yes. Include all in. Maybe Tatin can, uh, can elaborate more about this because we received many questions to ask about uh, this. Yeah. In the, you can look at the latest, later maybe you all can share also the Pakeso answer they did write out. The 4K must include uh, your allowance, commission, OT. Uh, those also is included together in the determination of the 4,000. For example, your staff pay is 3,008 plus allowance uh, 500 is already more than 4,000. So that means don't qualify. Qualify, they cannot claim. I cannot, sorry, they cannot claim the, yeah, 1,000, the 1,002 or the 600. Claim 800, no, cannot claim it. Oh, more than that, yeah. Okay, thank you, Tatin. Uh, next question. Apply the ERP RM six hundred after apply the wage, the wage subsidy RM one thousand two. As it's a different staff lah. If the staff apply ERP, that same person cannot apply for the wage subsidy lah. Okay, so they cannot apply for both together, right? You you can uh, let's say one company some is on totally unpaid. So you apply the unpaid lah. but then uh, some is uh, you ask them to work still, then you can go for the wage subsidy. But it's uh, the one company, one person cannot go for both. Okay. Next question. If the staff opt for not to work for a few days, can I still claim the wages subsidy? If the staff opt for not to work for a few days, can can the company I mean, no, for the the WSP? No, if opt to work means that whether the his uh leave or whatever, it just it just takes a normal leave. I think it's not an issue. As long as they still continue, you know, uh, with the company, they are not uh, they are not uh, retrenched or laid off. You know, it's not an issue because the normal leave is 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 fine. You know. 
Okay. <clears throat> okay, next question. What if employees resign one month after my company granted the WSP? I should give this to any authorities? Okay, yes, yes, yeah, so so long. Need to notify. Need to notify so so Okay. Next question. Okay. Until January, a uh, senior staff still in Pakeso, but February already took out due to age limit. Can he still eligible for WSP? Not eligible, not, not subscribing to, not paying to SOPSO anymore. Okay. okay. Next question. If company apply WSP for staff earning below 4K, can the company still negotiate pay cut or deduct unpaid for those earning above 4K? Next question, subsidy RM3000 for sole proprietor micro SME. If the SME no stock inside the company, is it still eligible? What, what's that? I, I, I did not hear very clear. So uh, we know that we have the SME, uh, micro SME 3000 grant from the government, right? So, so is it also applicable to the sole provider? Yes, yes, yes. The sole provider the company, they don't have any they No, as long as they have got registered with ROB, uh, RO, uh, uh, ROS, no, ROB, uh, ROC, or, or local government. Okay. SSM, uh, SSM and local government. Okay. Okay, maybe that we can elaborate more about this uh, RM3000 uh, SME micro grant because we received few questions about this. Okay, micro grant uh, grant is, uh, is only meant for those who have uh, five staff or below, uh, or either or, or according to the definition, you know, the 300,000 uh, owner. Either one, you as long as you feel that you are able to So, this, uh, I'm not sure, they are, uh, I think they are, then the condition, I think you need to. Uh, LRB, you must register LRB. Then you, you can only claim LRB. Will, uh, I think they will claim through LRB. I think it's 3000. Okay, now that, next question. If we are a listed company that has few subsidiaries under SME, can we apply the WSP for all the companies? Should be yes. That's right. You, you, you see, look at the requirement. It didn't say whether you are listed company or not. As long as you are listed with. Uh, so I think you are eligible. 4,000 and below. Yeah. That, that, next question Can I reduce working hours and still apply for the WSP? Why not? Okay, you, uh, the one is your internal, they are still as long as your, your staff did not, uh, uh, you did not cut pay cut, I think should be allowed to apply the one. If you have pay cut, then different story. Okay, next question. Uh, company annual re revenue about 1 million. I got 10 staff. We are an air conning service company. We pay so -so to staff. Are we micro or SME? More than, more than five staff already SME. Uh, you can claim uh, 1,002 for, for your staff by 10. That means you've got the uh, 7,002. Uh, 12,000. 12, for three months. Okay. Okay. That, that, okay. So the SME, uh, micro SME grant RM three thousand. How to register with IRB? Uh, 
as long as you are in business, you need to register with LRB, uh, uh, filing your tax, whether you're making profit or not. It's no problem, but you still have to file with the LRB. You don't know how to register, you get that this that is a pain yuck. Nothing wrong with that. This question here, when does the 4K salary apply? Uh, when, when does the forecast salary apply from when to when? Like they have, uh, they have a start. They start the April, May, June. Okay. So, like, if they say they have a start. In January and February, the, uh, the staff salary is 7K, but in March, the staff voluntary to take pay cut, cut to 3.5K. So will, will, it, will the staff still be allowed to apply for the iron one point, uh, iron 1,200 subsidy? Uh, no. No, because this is a pay cut. No. <laughs> Okay. Here's a question. Company must prove that 50% reduction in revenue since generally then only can qualify for the WSP. They want to only apply for the 75 stuff. 75 stuff below no need. So this has no need to prove the deal. I think sales that would be more easier, you know, it's not like yeah. the, the announcement, you have to compare to January, but no, this one is, is as long as you approve, then you will be able to claim. The government tried to make it easier for everyone to claim. Okay. Okay. Here, is a, here we have a very interesting uh, question. Uh. Okay, if the director fees below 4K, is the director still eligible to apply for the WSP? Yes, I mean, okay. No, you just think that. There is director fees, but the director is subscribed to the floor. Just collecting the fees, no. If you're not, it's not registered, so, so no. Are, no, it's not salary, it's a fees, not salary. So, so the main is not eligible. Okay, not that. Okay. Here also another question about SME, micro SME grant. Okay, I am a sole provider and also submitted Form B before. That's mean I already registered with I, IRB? Yes. So the SME micro, uh, micro SME grant RM2000 will be given automatically to the account? I think they are, they are, I think they are working out, they, they try to make it easier, they try to propose to the government to make all the micro SME as easy as possible to claim uh, without submitting any document. As you have account to prove it, you know, the RRB will, I think they're going to use RRB to, to pay, and RRB have your account number. Okay, next question. Okay. Where can I find the definition of what SME we are in? I understand based on the new st stimulus package, under 75 staff is considered micro SME, correct? Small. 25 staff consider small SME. The five staff and below is micro. We will, we will post up the definition at our website. Go our website and see definition of SME. Okay, thanks, Tato. Okay. About the salary 4K cap, if the commission pay out by quarterly uh, and more than 4K, still entitled for the WSP? This uh, question many uh, people also ask us. So we've checked with Pakeso, they ask us to use the six months average. So meaning you six months to average out every month, is it less than 4,000? Okay. 
Another question, does it classify as retrenchment is not confirming a staff under probation? I don't think it is not a retrenchment. It's not confirmation. Is the the staff is not your permanent staff yet? Okay. Okay. Next question: For the deferment of CP two zero four, do we need to pay back the total amount deferred for the three months over the remaining six months? Uh, repeat again. Sorry. For the deferment of CP204, do we need to pay back the deferred three months uh, amount over the next uh, remaining six months? If you do not reduce your um, CP204, yeah, if you do not reduce your profit amount, then they will let you pay three months until three months later or so. So my advice is to reduce it. So, because most of the cases, the profit will not be as much as before. So, take this opportunity to reduce your tax estimate uh, rather than just defer it. So, when you defer it, you can, you follow back the amount payment, but it will be longer, another three months more. You follow the same, if you just defer it, let's say your uh, payment is 10,000 a month, you continue to pay, but the amount is you pay three more months, until three more months later. Lah. So you don't, it, you don't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean the, if you are paying 10,000, you continue to pay, it doesn't add up to the amount, uh, but you, they will let you to extend the payment further. Lah. My advice is to revise down the estimate. Lah, huh? Okay. Okay. Next question. Okay. I think this is more about the sole proprietor. Okay. If my sales drop more than 50% in April and I claim WSP, but in May, my sales didn't reach and drop of another 50%, can I still claim for the WSP? Micro, as long as you are micro, you no need to still drop. If you make money, you still can claim. Uh, so provider, so provider is considered micro. If you are staff less than less less than five, okay. Or your staff less than seventy five, no need to prove your sales. Okay. Okay. Next question. My company consists of one hundred and twenty two staff. Only the three staff is below I'm four K. Therefore, my company entitled to claim. I'm 800 per pack instead of I'm 1,200 per pack, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it depends, you know, if you are, if, if the 110 is including foreign workers, I think you can take out the foreign worker number. Because foreign worker is, is not in the, in the definition. Contracts. Okay, understand? Next question, how does Percaso validate the number of employees of the company? You, you got contact with Percaso because Percaso have all your data. Unless you did not pay, pay Percaso, that means sorry, you can't claim at all. Okay, next question. A company with more than 75 staff, but the revenue for January to March not drop over 50%. Anywhere to claim for WSP? Now they allow you to look at April and May as well. So all the way until September. So you can look at any month the drop is more than 50%, then you are entitled to claim. Uh, uh, start, uh, compare to that January, I'm not necessary now. Got previous three years now, no. Okay, and then for the micro SME, so for the staff uh, to uh, determine their micro SME, the staff is it included part timer? Uh, 
As well as I mean, I think normally they don't count the permanent staff, like full, full time staff. Okay, there is a question about bonus. Uh, okay, uh, if bonus is only pay in January, but February and March no bonus, so how to calculate? Again, okay. Um, okay, they they paid the bonus to the staff in January, but February and March no bonus to pay to the uh, employee. So how to calculate for the uh, uh, wages subsidies scheme? The February and March uh, don't need to include the bonus. Standard pay, you know, uh, with just okay. Okay, another question about okay, so okay, a company they have one staff just joined in the month of March, he just registered with Pakeso and he is less than 21 years old and he only contribute one month so so and EIS. Are we eligible to claim WSP for him? believe so, I guess. Okay. Okay, let me check others question. Okay. A question there. My new employee is supposed to join in first of April. Due to MCO, I inform him to join after the MCO period, which means in 15th of April. Can I claim WSP for him for April? So, I think, uh, I think uh, at the moment you are not allowed to claim now, you know, because they are not joining it. But they also put a condition that they also mentioned that they must join 1st of January. Agree with that so because if you have a hire him, how you sub, how you uh, put it uh, the the stock so there you don't have a stock so contribution. So how can you claim? Okay, okay. There's a question here for the WSP. How can you show the evidence of revenue that has fallen more than fifty percent drop of our sales? Your general ledgers, your sales ledger, you can show from accounts. So you can print out your accounts to show to them. Okay. If a company turn over more than 300k, but less than five staff, eligible for micro SME grant. Eligible. Eligible, right? Okay. Okay. Then for the WSP scheme, right? If we have intern internships in the company, are they also eligible to claim for the WSP? The internship pays, of course. Yeah. No, then they are not allowed. Internship normally the salary very very low only right? yeah maybe five hundred yeah. uh, or five hundred or thousand or maximum up to thousand five. I don't think the internship they are not. Okay, okay. Another question. Okay, can we terminate an employee which is under probation period during this MCO? during this uh, COVID-19 crisis? This question also a lot of people ask, uh, we must uh, have a reason to terminate. So, I think can elaborate about this one because seeing many people ask. Yeah. So 
you you must have a reason. Is the staff non-performing, or um, if you have you are restructuring, or what is the reason that you are terminating this staff? Like you need to still document it to avoid later any um in, any um you know illegal implications. Uh? Okay. Okay. Next question. Okay. This is about SSM. Okay. If a company just register with SSM in 2019 and run business less than one year and they are not submit for income tax. So even they don't have registration number with LHDN. So is this eligible to come for the micro SME grant? Below five, uh, five staff. Five staff, they still uh, they are they still can register. I think they just started business. I think they already registered with R uh, R B already. Now all the company register. You must uh, uh when you start business, you must register with R B. Okay, noted. Okay, this question to Tating. Okay, Ben Negara moratorium for bank loan such as B A. There is interest to be charged 4.6 to 4.7 percent and non negotiable, correct? Depending on the bank. Depends on your bank. Okay. So go negotiate with your bank. Yeah, you can negotiate. Yeah, go negotiate with your bank. Okay. Understand. So they have to negotiate with the bank by themselves, right? Okay, actually a lot of people are about, uh, ask about contract staff under the MCO period uh, for the WSP camp. Maybe you can elaborate more about this issue. The piece of so the PAS, I think you know they are just cut from other company and then they did not piece of so yes i think they are not eligible for it. okay okay this question to Tating. company has informed moratorium on company tax payment from april to june so does this mean we will need to pay tax for our financial year 2019 until march 2020 next year Meaning the, there is already a moratorium, so the balance is it paid until March 2020 next year, correct? Yeah. yeah. If you do not uh, revise your tax estimate to, let's say, uh, a lesser amount, yes, you still need to continue to pay. If your year end is December, yes, the amount will be until uh, March. The payment will be until March. So it depends on your financial year end as well. So, for example, a December year end, normally you pay until uh, January, but if let's say you uh, it's, uh, it's extended, then you pay three more months from there. Okay. Okay, this question to Tato. For WSP, if we have less than 20 employees, we will classify under micro SME. But in IRB point of view, No, 20 is not micro. Oh, 20 not oh, micro. Say 1,000 to years. Five, I okay. can't emphasize to five and below. So, so they still a little bit to claim for the WSP, right? If they have stuff below 4K pay. WSP, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, let me check for another question. We have another 10 minutes more to end the session. Uh, if anyone would like to talk, uh, we can still allow the big one. And uh, any question from the floor? Uh, from the floor, from the, the group.
allowed to ask. Raise hand and ask first. Can't hear. Can't hear. Can't hear. Can I can I ask a question? Sure, sure, sure. Hi. Uh. Okay. Anyways. Uh. Thank you so much, everyone, for for, for your information so far. So I have a quick question, which is uh. Actually, I run a small company of about thirty staff. So before the stimulus package was announced a few days ago, what I did was actually I've already had an arrangement uh, to get all my employees content to implement unpaid leave. Several days of unpaid leave stretch across three months, April, May and June. So my question is, can I still apply for the wage subsidy program and still implement this unpaid leave uh, that we are planning to do so? 4,000 and below, no. 4,000 and uh, you can do unpaid leave. So for as long as I'm implementing my unpaid leave for all my staff, I cannot apply for this wage subsidy program. Lah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask a question? Hello. Yeah. My company has two categories of uh, employee. One is um, monthly uh, salary, another one is commission based. Can I apply for WSP uh, for the monthly pay uh, employee and ERP uh, for the commission based uh, employee? All of them pay SOXO. Yes, you can do that. Can, is it? it means we can go for can both uh, for yes. different workers. Uh. You can do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, can I ask some questions? Uh, just um, want to ask for, uh, I think in the market, there are many so-called Sandram Bahad, uh, whose business only for investment holding, like a typical case, like, you know, a company that owns uh, two or three properties. Um, because it's only investment for, uh, holding, so there isn't any staff but the company do maintain an income tax number. So would this kind of company be entitled for the micro fund of the 3,000? If you are no staff, that means your, your turn more than uh, 300. Assuming it's below? Income more than 300. Below 300. Less than 300. I'll be uh, back home now. Yes. I'm not sure whether a lot of I don't know. That's the way I think. I think the let RRB. I think RRB will make the judgment. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Here is a question from Facebook. Okay. We have an employee contributing to SOSO, but not EIS due to the employee is below 18 years old. Can the employee enjoy the package of the WSP claim? As long as you are SOSO contributor, you be able to enjoy. Okay. Okay, another question from Facebook. For lorry driver who don't have basic salary, and their commission is based on per trip run. So company got contribute SOSO and EIS for the lorry driver. How to track their 18 March to 14 April wages? I think it was based on the amount you contribute. If you contribute the driver is 3,000 per month, then it's get out of the They were also based on compare with your Okay, not that. Any, 
any 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 question? Okay, so there's a question here. Question, you know, the yeah. Okay. Since WSP only applicable for those salary below four K, how about for those above four K? We can deduct their pay, or we ask them to take annual leave. You can do anything you want. Government allow you to take from the company. You can, you can, you can, you can negotiate with your staff. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, let's say we have eight staff earning below four k. Want to retrench two? Can we still apply for the WSP for the remaining six? Uh, don't think they allow you to claim. Condition is. Thanks. What happened if they say these two staff uh, is due to the disciplinary uh, problem? If you have a very good reason, true reason, no, they are, you have to because I because I didn't them. enjoy the uh, the the. WSP uh, uh, for these two staff. I mean, uh, no, yes, but this these two staff you must when you when you spend him uh, them then you must have the proof you know I uh, you know that I like follow the procedure human resource ministry you know pre warning letter or the proper procedure then you couldn't get it. not that okay, understand not now what happened if I have a contract with them. And uh, I pay them a, a, a so-so everything. But so happened that you know the contract actually end in July. In July, so then I decided not to not to continue with the contract. Meaning to say that you know they will be out from my uh, organization. Now, am I and I am, am I still can can claim for the uh, W WSP uh, program? I mean for 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 them. This is a contract contract start means you know maybe two years contract or whatever. So happened that the contract due in July. It's a bit different scenario. I, I, I would think that if it's um the in the case is finish of a contract is not a retrenchment uh you can prove a case to Pakesola because you would have staff resigning as well so uh these sort of cases you can uh, prove to Pakesola to in order to to claim it yeah i i, I agree to I, I agree to that you know uh that thing, can i can i uh probably you know uh look at your slide on the uh three month division that you can refer for the three months one because from another uh from another source that I understand, uh, you we don't need to make good of this three month deferment. We only pay, you know, uh when 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 you submit your tax return. But just now I overheard that you are saying that you know we have to continue to make good uh after the I mean for another three months, you know. Can I confirm that? Yes, unless you like I keep saying you have to uh revise down your tax. No, even I didn't revise, you know, even I didn't revise because uh, I will I will only make good when I do a final submission, then only I, I, I pay the everything. No. Because based on your slide, you know, you will actually revise the payment for every, the rest of the six months. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's only deferred three months, then after that, you still need to pay. Still need to pay, yeah, because... Uh, if, if your sale did not drop, you know, you maintain your sale, that means you're not revise your pay, that means you have to pay. You still have to pay. It's not that, you know, when I only I only pay when I file the tax return, means together with the balance of tax. For that to do, you have to do the revision. You have to revise down. Hmm. But the revise now, I will subject to 30% uh, uh, rules. You can still revise up again in the nine six or nine months yeah understand uh, i will i will advise you we better revise now 
Okay, here is a question to Tato. Okay, if they have an employee is getting salary RM1K from three companies, so can all the three companies claim for the advance for this stuff? These three companies all file in the SOXO. You've got three, three different files on the SOXO, no, definitely no. You get only one company file the SOXO name. Normally, you, you have three, uh, three companies pay the salary. How many companies pay the SOXO? Three companies also pay SOXO. I don't think so. Okay. So only one company you can claim. Yes, only one company can claim. To, to, to note that we are ending our session. Now it's Rachel 30. Can we have a last three questions for Dato and, and Dato? Okay, right. the last two questions from Facebook. Okay. The first question, if the director salary less than I'm 4K and so-so contribution, so can the director claim for the WSP? If he's an employee of the company, I think Director fee is the is the salary. I think they can, they can claim a below four k. As long as your name in the list of the so yeah. Okay. Next question: What is there for those self-employed? Because most of the self-employed uh, entrepreneur, they don't see any concrete assistance from this category. Employee normally they don't get anything because unless you register, this is why I say if you are self employed, uh, registered at uh, ROX, not ROC, so SSM, you register SSM or you register with micro, we consider micro, which is all self employed. Micro is all self employed, so they can, they are, they are allowed. Is a freelancer? No, I don't think this. Uh, Thank you, Doctor. I don't think any benefit. I think that's all correct. Right. The condition is you have to register your SSM, and then uh, you are less than five people under micro, you can claim a 3000. Right? Today, all we have finished our session today. I want to. Can I ask the last question? You know, uh, if I have a complex. So I ran out 700 tenants, for example. So for me to go and check each of them, uh, whether they are SME or not, I think will be very troublesome because I, I have to give them more than 30% discount for the first three months, lah, example, okay? So can I get the declaration from them to confirm, for them to confirm, is it sufficient you know, for the supporting document? For the tax, ah? Yeah. Yeah, we have to wait for more info la, from uh, IRB. Yeah, but for now, you can do that first. La. Yeah, just get the declaration from them, you know, uh, for the time being. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks. And uh, a piece of advice to everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. And, uh, if you are not sure and not clear about that, just submit. Don't worry. Anything come back, you nothing to lose to submit, right? And uh, thank you, Dr. Datin. And, uh, if, if, but if we do a wrong declaration, then we are probably in, probably got problem. No, no, they, when they ask wrong. To... It's just that they will just reject your 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 application. You know, don't worry about that. It won't put you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is just. Uh, of course, you can get more information from our session. We will have more coming up. And uh, the best is, of course, you get all the thing right. I'm suggesting that there's like uh, the between you know my line. Sometimes we also not sure uh, whether it is clear or not. Uh, it is right or not. Uh, because there's no information coming up from uh, the government at the moment yet. But we have, our, of course, a lot of information uh, on our hand with Dato and uh, on power for us when, uh, while we're meeting with the government uh, uh, agency and all that. And I hope that you guys are benefited from this uh, session. And thank you once again from SME Malaysia. Uh, we hope you can go to our website. We still our website once again and register as a member and uh, the free membership and uh, we will send you all the information we can and you can also get a lot of information from our website have a good day okay. thank you very much thank you okay thank you SME Malaysia and thank you Mike Chris thank you. See you.